Hello and welcome. How much do we really know about the life of Malcolm X? The iconic African-American civil rights leader told his story in a widely read autobiography. But a new book might reveal a few skeletons in this historic figure's closet. The original autobiography has been highly studied as an integral part of American history. In 1998, Time magazine named Malcolm X's autobiography one of the ten most influential non-fiction books of the 20th century. His life is documented in detail, from his early years in jail and his conversion to Islam, to his rise to international prominence. It's also well known that he acrimoniously split from the Nation of Islam and that soon after members of the organization assassinated him. But another side of the man is revealed in the recent biography called Malcolm X, A Life of Reinvention by Manning Marable, who passed away soon after completing the controversial book. Marable said his work was aimed at, quote, humanizing the iconic figure by describing a man with flaws, such as infidelity and personal conflicts, but also highlighting how Malcolm X moved away from radical views of black separatism to embrace the idea of unity. The book also takes a closer look at his assassination in February of 1965, which remained surrounded in mystery and controversy. So today we ask, how accurate are the revelations in Manning Marable's version of the life of Malcolm X, and what more do we learn about this historic figure? Remember, you can join our conversation with your questions and comments. You can send an SMS or an email. Well, I'm joined by three men with different points of view on the biography. We have Zahir Ali, a researcher of the biography who also served as project manager and senior researcher of Columbia University's Malcolm X Project, a program focusing on the life and legacy of the civil rights activist. Todd Burrows uh, is a journalist with more than 25 years of experience in mass media. He's a co-author of Civil Rights, Yesterday and Today. Dr. Burroughs is also a lecturer in the Department of Communication Studies at Morgan State University. And his colleague, Jared Balls, with us too. Dr. Balls not only teaches at the university, but is also a columnist and producer for a weekly radio program for blackagendareport.com. Gentlemen, I welcome you to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Zahir Ali, if I could start with you and uh, ask about uh, this, this uh, Marable book, because he died just uh, days before uh, the book was uh, going to be released. But while working on it, he explained he wanted it to humanize Malcolm X. What did he mean by that? I think that what Professor Marable meant by humanizing Malcolm in terms of looking at Malcolm had a very strong political public image and when he presented himself he presented himself with such assurance in terms of the positions that he had and I think one of the things that Professor Marable did in his book is show that there were times where uh, Malcolm was not so sure about the positions he held you know he talk, he talks in these two debates that Malcolm has in series one with uh, with Baird Rustin where Baird Rustin kind of you know, uh, challenges Malcolm on his conservatism while he was in the Nation of Islam in terms of his apolitical, uh, political disengagement from the civil rights movement. And this, you know, this was something that kind of shook Malcolm, and he had to constantly be checking and, re and rethinking his political posture with regards to, to the civil rights movement. Well, Professor Marable also explains in his book that, that it was born out of a critical deconstruction of the original autobiography uh, that Malcolm X worked on with journalist Alex Haley. But is there anything really in common between those two publications? I mean, do we, do we get to see two different uh, figures here when it comes to Malcolm X? I think there's some consistency. I think the autobiography is a powerful literary story of transformation, of personal transformation. What is less there in the autobiography is the political beliefs of Malcolm. And then Alex Haley had his own voice that was influencing the, the shaping of the text, um, which, you know, wanted to highlight the pathology of urban life and the, uh, he saw in Malcolm's politics of black nationalism, um, the kind of failure of, of integration, of, of, a warning, it was a cautionary tale uh, for what integration would uh, the failure to integrate would lead to. Now, of course, a very complex and interesting life that Malcolm X had and in discussing it is always also a complex issue as well. But Dr. Todd Burroughs, good to have you with us as well, sir. And I know you're not that enthusiastic about the way the book has been put together, are you? Why well, it's, why it's literally how it's put together that, that bothers me. I think we need more research on Malcolm X. I think that uh, Dr. Marable did a... I think he tried very hard battling illness, uh, doing more than one book at the same time. Uh, those things are, are very difficult to, to, to juggle in. I mean, now, you know, the, the good thing here is that this is only the third biography of Malcolm X. There will be more. Mm -hmm. And as there will be more, this can serve, the best parts of it can serve as a foundation for the next biography. I mean, if we count the three volumes of biographies of, done by Taylor Branch, that makes about eight biographies just on Martin Luther King Jr. Mm -hmm. So there can be more biographies on Malcolm X. I was just very disappointed about the circumstances of this book because it could have been a much more uh, richer and fuller portrait. 
We'll find out more about that as, as the show goes on. But let me welcome in Dr. Jared Ball as well, and good to have you with us as well, sir. Now, of course, you know, um, what, what uh, Dr. Burroughs was saying is quite interesting, that the idea that there's going to be lots of uh, books about this. Now, it, it, when you look at what's been done with Professor Marable, isn't it good at least there is one, one extra view? There's one stepping aside from the autobiography and different perspective on, on Malcolm X. Well, I often go back and forth on this kind of question because uh, on the one hand, you could say it's good that, that uh, a book or any discussion of Malcolm X is positive. On the other hand, when certain uh, products, uh, a book of this nature or Spike Lee's film, are raised to the level as this book is described as definitive, uh, it becomes the standard by which all others are measured. It becomes, in many ways, for a lot of people, the only source uh, people will go to. Uh, and I think, in some ways, shuts off conversation. And then, of course, you know, with my biggest problem with the book being it's very well, you know, uh, a highly skilled and well written repositioning of Malcolm's politics to sort of liberalize them and, and mainstream them, uh, it may leave people with uh, what I would consider to be a false impression about where Malcolm was going politically and ideologically and may hamper future um, research or, or, or uh, uh, you know, scholarship on, on Malcolm X. Uh, well, let me so give, I'm not really sure. Yeah. Well, let me give Zahir Ali a chance to, to defend the, the idea of that m more could have been done because, of course, you worked quite hard on this book. And, uh, but if, of course, Dr. Marable, I'm uh, sorry, Dr. Uh, Professor Marable was, was you know, ill as well, it does limit what he might have been able to do. Well, I, I want to say that, you know, working with Professor Marable, and, and he studied Malcolm for over two decades. And this particular book was the result of a concentrated research effort of 10 years. And working with him as one of his students and researchers, you know, Professor Marable would debate and discuss so many aspects of Malcolm's life with us. And, you know, this book is for me and for many of us who work with him, you know, getting this book was our first time to see how this debate and discussion played out in Professor Marable's mind. And so this is very much his book. He literally wrote this book by hand. You know, Professor Marable did not use computers. He literally sat with a notepad and wrote this book. And it was written over a series, a period of about two years uh, once the research was winding down. And so even though he, he did, he was challenged by, by illness, the bulk of this book was done prior to the most serious onset of, of his illness. Dr. Burroughs, in, in spite of your reservations, what, what new uh, information do you think we learn about uh, Malcolm X from this book? Well, there are some personal uh, revelations which I think have been overplayed mm -hmm. in the media. What I found new was uh, Malcolm X's relationship with the Muslim world and how that played into the conflict between Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam. I did know, uh, studying Dr. John Henry Clark and others, that Malcolm wanted to help the Nation of Islam go into another arena. Uh, and that was not possible as a result of conflicts mm -hmm. between Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam. So I understand that he wanted to join with uh, Wallace Muhammad and try to bring the Nation of Islam to the next step. What I did not know is that part of the conflict between Malcolm X and the Nation of Islam was the fact that Malcolm X was going to delegitimize the Nation of Islam in the Muslim world. And I found that to be a fascinating uh, portrayal and discussion by Dr. Marable. Dr. Ball, it, interesting you said that, you know, the danger is peace becomes definitive. And with that, often the chapters can be closed, or at least in people's minds. Now, it's interesting, when we publicized we were doing a show on Malcolm X and the, and the, the new book and everything, uh, we had a lot of our viewers, you know, very, they felt very defensive. A lot of the comments that came in were very defensive. And I wonder, how easy is it really to have uh, an open debate about Malcolm X now because of the kind of figure he was and what he represents to so many people. Well, I mean, this is sort of what my concern has been uh, centered around, is that uh, what we have here in, in Professor Marable's book is in many ways his views of where Malcolm was and what Malcolm was, was headed toward. Uh, when you see the, the, the amount of times words like likely or probably are used in the book, or um, particularly the epilogue, which is where I have my biggest concerns, you see a version of Malcolm X that is clearly Professor Marable's. Uh, and to the extent that, uh, so this is, this is, I think that's normal, that's natural and understandable. Uh, and I think that we would all do that. Uh, I certainly would do that were I to, to take up uh, such a, a, an endeavor. Um, but where I think that, that, this is where I think that the world is having its, its uh, uh, concerns as well, that uh, we all have our preferred versions. Uh, different camps, politically and ideologically, have all claimed Malcolm X. And I think that, that uh, uh, Marable's book in many ways could have done more to allow for more of those versions to be included in, in the discussion so that we would see a version of Malcolm that I think is, is such, certainly more 
complex and certainly more radical than I think where Professor Marable leaves us uh, or leaves Malcolm uh, for us at the end. Yeah. Well, let me, Zahir Ali, let me illustrate some of the you know, defensive yeah. nature of the emails we had. from One from South Africa, I'll put this to you, from Aisha Asraf, who wrote in from Johannesburg, saying, there is no way to hurt a man who has done great deeds because they speak for themselves. However, by questioning his integrity and morality, it tarnishes him as a role model. This book just sounds like a smear campaign against a great individual whom Americans do not want to view as a hero. So uh, I want you to address that. It, it absolutely is not, is not a smear campaign. I think um, what Professor Mar you know, Professor Marable, the overwhelming majority and body of this 600-page text focuses on Malcolm's political evolution as a Pan-Africanist, focuses on his deepening spirituality as a Muslim that begins even while he's in the Nation of Islam. And so I think in, in, in Professor Marable's treatment of Malcolm is, is, is very sympathetic but critical. When we worked with Professor Marable, there were things he found about Malcolm that awed him, that absolutely awed him. And then there were things about Malcolm that he found that he personally was critical of. And I think what we find in this text, as, as our other guests have said, is Professor Marable's grappling with the complexity of Malcolm, those things that he thought that Malcolm did which were great in terms of uh, his political stance and challenging white racism and challenging black people to a greater sense of, of their identity. And But there were things that he was critical of, Malcolm meeting with the Ku Klux Klan as a member of the Nation of Islam. And so Professor Marable gives, I think, a complex uh, portrait of this. And I want to say that his Professor Marable is very transparent in his writing, as as uh, Dr. Ball says, you know he uses words um, when he wants to speak authoritatively about Malcolm. He does so, and when he when he's saying he's speculating or or thinking or approximating about Malcolm, he says so as well. So I think that the text uh, does not present itself, you know, in a way that shuts down uh, alternative views of Malcolm. Let me let me just before I get back to the, the two gentlemen mm -hmm. with us as well, uh, ask you about this this uh, strong focus that uh, Professor Marable had on on the issue of the uh, is on Islam and the importance mm -hmm. uh, of it. Uh, his split with the nation of Islam, of right. course, and conversion to Sunni right. Islam. Why was that such a strong focus for? Dr. Well, it, and, and this is one of the things where I think the book really shines because Professor Marable situates not just Malcolm's journey but the nation of Islam within the larger context of the history of Islam in America, and he positions that in terms of development of the. Ahmadiyyas and their missionary movements to America and, and, and shows as early as 1950 when Malcolm is in prison he's just being exposed to the nation of Islam he's writing the prison authorities to request uh, you know treatment for religious freedom and threatens to go to the Egyptian consulate to protest the treatment of Muslims and this shows that even in as early as 1950 Malcolm had already envisioned a relationship of, of that he had to the broader global Islamic tradition and certainly he made several trips you know he traveled in 1959 this is a trip that's not really covered in the autobiography where Malcolm traveled to to uh, the, the Middle East on behalf of Elijah Muhammad and began uh, interacting with Muslims there and so I think that there are important points raised in terms of this and for 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 Malcolm uh, he wrote in his diary after he went to Hajj you know uh, Islam would be the bridge for right. us to Africa and Asia and so he saw Islam and Pan-Africanism as very much partners in in the ongoing struggle and, and that's what I wonder Dr. Burroughs maybe this this might because it weaves so much of uh, Islam's history in the US uh, this book it might actually open the debate on on the way Islam, especially at this sort of sensitive time for Muslims, uh, the way Islam fits in the country, and of course the way African American Islam has also been so often sidelined. Mm -hmm. That that and but what I was really interested in was Malcolm's relationship with the Muslim world, including the Muslim Brotherhood in Cairo. A, a lot of the book is about the legitimacy of the Nation of Islam, pro or con, in the Muslim world, and what role Malcolm X, as an African American ambassador, so to speak would play in that. And I wonder, Dr. Ball, yeah, because the, the issue was also, it sh it were, during the fight for uh, justice for African Americans, there was this tendency for everyone to lump it together in, the, in, in just one movement, whereas this shows there were fractures between the Nation of Islam and Malcolm X's own uh, thoughts and movements. Well, I mean, even if I could just take a uh, uh, you know, slight issue with even the introduction of this program where Malcolm is described as a civil rights leader, I mean, this mm -hmm. is sort of uh, where I think needs to be challenged, not only in terms of that popular description of him, but even in terms of the way I think Marable tries to position him at the end of the book vis-a-vis, -vis, in this instance, his relationship to Islam and the world. That is to say, 
uh, that Malcolm X was a human rights leader, as he called himself. He was a freedom fighter. He was a, he was a, he was in, in, interested in human liberation across the globe, um, challenging capitalism, challenging white supremacy, challenging the the abuses of religion. So when when Marable positions him through his uh, uh, advance into Orthodox Islam as someone who would have been equally critical of Al Qaeda and uh, and of 9/11. Uh, he does so absent any of the critical uh, uh, political uh, worldview or political ideology Malcolm had been developing for uh, his whole life, where I think it would have been more accurate to position uh, Malcolm as somebody who would have been less likely to, to lump in with the mainstream conservative attack on, on so-called terrorism from the Islamic world and would have maybe repositioned it as he did with the Kennedy assassination in, ter in terms of this chickens coming home to roost question, mm -hmm. or as Dr. Burroughs said, in terms of his relationship with the, uh, uh, the Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, and he certainly, as Marable does carefully, I think, to omit, would have been far more critical of the West and Israel in terms of its treatment of the Islamic world, Palestine in particular. So I think this is sort of what I'm arguing is sort of the careful repositioning of Malcolm X as a mainstream liberal figure as opposed to the radical he was, regardless of where he was going with Islam and Pan-Africanism, which, by the way, uh, Manning Marable describes as a race-neutral quote. Right. I wanted to ask you about yeah. that because that's used a lot in the book. Well, I, I found, I, again, that's sort of what my, one of my problems with, with, with what Marable was doing here, that to paint him as someone on a linear progression out of a conservative, uh, reactionary nation of Islam, narrow nationalism into this sort of uh, open rainbow you know, coalition, Jesse Jackson version versus Fred Hampton version of ra rainbow coalition, is to mischaracterize, is, is to, to, to misrepresent where I think Malcolm was going politically, as he said so in his own speeches up until the moment he was assassinated. Although, of course, I just want to take mm. issue with one, one thing, that Dr. Sure. Wall, because the, what you're saying, though, is that uh, you, 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 had, you projected on him what he might be doing now with al-Qaeda and the attacks mm. of 9-11 and so on. But, of course, he was a constantly changing figure. Sure. So you're actually projecting in the same way, perhaps, Professor Marable. Absolutely. It, it, so so on, that, that's an important point I was uh, referenced earlier, that we, would all, we are all mm -hmm. doing that. That's what I'm saying people have to be careful with when they're reading this as a definitive biography and not to, 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 to uh, separate uh, Marable's own politics politics from this uh, uh, is, is, is what we're, I'm saying we all do. But, but my real point, and this is sort of where I was going with, with my criticism, particularly of the way the book concludes, is that to even raise the question of what Malcolm X would be saying about today's 2011 is to engage in a very personal, subjective, political argument because what Malcolm X would have been doing or what the world would be like, you know, today's world, Barack Obama, who is described as, as, as anticipated by uh, uh, Malcolm X, um, to, to, to describe 2011 as it is today with Obama and anything else in the world is to, is to deny the impact that Malcolm was having on the world and to deny the, the very important fact that I think Marable downplays, maybe we can come back to this, that, that Malcolm's assassination and the assassination of the ideas represented by Malcolm had to pre-exist before you could have a 2011 as it currently exists with Barack Obama as, as the first black president. A very quick comment, Dr. Burroughs, because you wanted to add something to this before I get back well, to Well, I just want to emphasize that, that this is Marable's narration of Malcolm X. So, for instance, Marable talks about how his, uh, Malcolm's version of what happened in the March on Washington is a, is a quote, gross dis uh, distortion of the facts. Well, it's not a gross distortion of the facts to Howard Zinn, who basically, uh, in my view, legitimizes Malcolm's view of the March on Washington in a people's history of the United States. So, what's good is, as Mr. Ali is saying, this does begin a debate, but I think it's a debate that we all have to take part in and not just Manning Marable about Malcolm X. Now, one thing, Zahir Ali, is that a lot of people are saying, well, you know, it's not that groundbreaking because a lot of these, these uh, things said about Malcolm X were already known, but people are wondering why it took so long to come out, such right. as the assassination controversy and perhaps the FBI having prior knowledge and so on. Well, I think there are certain things that are groundbreaking. Um, in completing this research, Professor Marable um, was, to my knowledge, the first scholar to engage Malcolm's diaries, um, and, and which detailed his travel abroad, which is something that is completely left out, really, in detail in the autobiography. And in looking at some of his travel abroad, he sees, for example, you know, Malcolm is meeting with the Muslim Brotherhood, but he's also meeting with NASA, a secular nationalist, right? So um, he's 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 really trying to explore all, and it's, it, part of this is 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 his own ideological um, repositioning, but part of this is also his tactical repositioning. You know, he's 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 there as a guest of the Egyptian state, so he's being very careful about what he says and what he doesn't say. When he goes to to Ghana and speaks. 
um, you know, he's, he, he speaks very favorably about Nkrumah, but doesn't really talk about the moves that Nkrumah had made to kind of stifle democratic reform. And so, again, this is, we don't know, is this ideological Malcolm or is this tactical Malcolm? I think one of the things that Professor Marable shows in this text are the kinds of ways that um, Malcolm was very flexible in terms of his strategies, in terms of reaching people. So in addition to those diaries, there are over 6,000 uh, pages of newly uh, declassified uh, FBI documents that, that Professor Marable accesses. Um, he is, I, to my knowledge, the first scholar to engage uh, the Manhattan District Attorney's case file on the assassination, which adds to the previously existing literature on the assassination. And I think he helps to raise some of the questions that were raised before and mm -hmm. raise them even more emphatically about the, those unanswered questions. Now, was it important also for Professor Marable to really go into the, the sort of personal stuff, the sexual preferences, infidelity, those kind of conflicts? I think I, I think that a lot of that has been sensationalized in the reports of the book. Um, there, th to me, there are certain aspects of Malcolm's life, his personal life, when he was Detroit Red and what he did as a hustler, um, constitute a very small part of what this book, is, is, you know, sets out to do. He does look at Malcolm's family life and the uh, ways the strain of Malcolm's very. Um, you know, he, he, he worked day and night as an organizer traveling uh, around the country establishing mosques for the Nation of Islam and the way that this put a strain on his family. And he also had a certain kind of political um, uh, view of what his family should be. And I think Professor Marable was trying to reconstruct the complete social architecture of Malcolm, not only politically, but also religiously and culturally. Dr. Burroughs, uh, I put the other email we got to, on a similar vein to the one I had read before. This came from Fabian Firi, who wrote into our Facebook page saying, whatever new discoveries or lies that have been invented about Malcolm X don't change the fact that he was a passionate freedom fighter who accomplished a great deal for the black community. And, and I wonder if, if really there is any room for people to want to know anything more, especially when it comes to issues like personal, uh, personal details and conflicts and so on. Well, as a journalist and a fledgling biographer myself, I do understand that you have to do the entire life, and that includes the personal life. So I don't have a problem with any biographer, including uh, the personal life. I do think, though, that we have to discuss a world figure in the context of the entire world. I think Manning, Marable, Manning Marable's book starts that discussion. But until folks go to Africa and go to all the places that he went in the Middle East and interview those folks, I mean, the entire book could be written just on Malcolm in Africa and Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. So until we do that work, we're only getting part of the picture. So again, Marable's book engages the discussion and advances it, uh, not as much as I would want it to, uh, with some basic parts of biography not being done, but, but it does do that. And, and the more we know about Malcolm, as long as it's contextualized, the more we understand he tried to do for African Americans and for other people who were in revolutions across the world. Well, Dr. Ball, just a quick thought. Is there going to be more debate than you expect more debate because of this book? Is it a good thing? I hope so, and I hope that people will go back and revisit the, the many books written on Malcolm and his assassination that Marable dismisses on page 490 of the book as in the 1990s as having no value, uh, while in many ways uh, 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 offering anew all of that evidence from Zach Kondo, uh, uh, William Sales, uh, uh, Carl Evans, all of their work should be reread and seen how, how uh, uh, much they, they prefigured what shows up in the Marables book. And then also, that, just very quickly, that the FBI, as, as Mr. Ali says, these FBI files were released, but the, the FBI doesn't read in, in Marable's book as having had much more of an impact than bystanders and crime solvers, as opposed to what even Claiborne Carson says in his initial book in the 90s uh, uh, about FBI files on Malcolm X as prefiguring the counterintelligence program that would later be developed to prevent the rise of a black messiah, as they said in their own literature, which Malcolm was seen to be the martyr uh, uh, in terms of that black nationalist movement by the FBI, by the CIA, by military intelligence, defense intelligence, so on, who are all monitoring Malcolm X. They, num they seem to have disappeared or been downplayed in, in, in this book on, uh, by Marable, including if, in fact, there were, you know, if you have the 6,000 pages of released of FBI files, so much more could have been said uh, that I think wasn't said that had been said in previous books, and that is a concern of mine. So I hope that people do revisit these other works as they read Marables and get deeply into that debate.
A very quick final word, uh, Zahir Ali. It sounds like there's a gap for you to continue the, the debate with maybe uh, continuing the story of Malcolm X in the next book, maybe. Well, like I said, <laughs> Professor Marable valued discussion and debate around the life of Malcolm, a figure so complex and compelling, and he would he would have enjoyed this conversation. This is this is actually, when, when he wrote this book, it wasn't as a retail product, it was at a, as an intellectual intervention and social justice intervention. And so he would have valued more people discussing and revisiting the life of Malcolm. Gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. I'm glad we had a chance to debate this. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. And thank you for being with us. Remember, you can follow the show on Facebook and see what we're up to there. You can give us feedbacks on the topics and post your questions and comments for us. On the next show, fighting corruption in India. As government scandals continue to grip the country, can a law 40 years in the making bring reform and transparency? Be sure to tune in for that. From me and the team, we'll see you next time.